Hello everyone and welcome to the part 2 of building a recipe app using Django, Tailwind and Mobile. So in the last video, we created the sign in and sign up functionality and we also created a custom alert message. So in this part of the video, we're going to create a profile model that would extend the user model so that we can upload our profile picture and other information as well. We will also build the update profile functionality and the update password functionality. And we will create also models for the recipe, ingredients, and instructions. And if you are excited, let us go ahead and continue building this Django recipe app. In this section of our video, we're going to download images that we're going to use for our website. So let's go to story set and the first link, click the first link. And then here we can download the illustrations that we're going to use for this application. So the first illustration here that I want to download is for the home page. So maybe let's search for cooking here. And then here, let's just look around and I kind of like this one. So if you want other styles as well, you can choose Rapana, Amico, Bro, and Rafiki. So each of which is very beautifully created and I just really like this one right here. So I'm going to change this to a different color so that it would match the color of our website and we can now download this SVG. And then here they're asking us to give them attribute for the free illustration that they created. We're going to do that later. And then afterwards, after we download the image for our homepage, let us search for an image for our sign up page. So sign up. In this page, most of the time we want to use images on the same style, like for this one. This would be the same style of Kuwait. And then I'm going to change it to a different color for our sign up. And let's download that image. Now, after sign up, let's search for sign in. Here for sign in, let's search for an image that best suits our needs. So let's say for example, this one. It's also a Kuwait and, and that would be log in. Then I'm going to download it change the color so that it would match the color of our website and download the SVG afterwards. And after that, we're going to search for an image that we will use whenever the user didn't upload an image for the recipe. So we're going to use that image as the default. So let's search for here recipe. And this one looks quite similar. So we're going to use this one even if it's Amico. Still quite looks similar. So changes to a different color so we're going to use this image whenever the user didn't upload an image so let's download this image and then lastly we're going to search for an image that we will use whenever we don't find something so whenever they, we search for a recipe and we can't find it maybe we're going to display an image also so for this one maybe let's use this one right here and then let's change the color that we have here to a different color and then let's download this SVG. Okay, that will be all the images or illustrations that we're going to need. Let's say, let's go to this download page or download folder that we have. And most of the time what I do is I change the, I rename all of these images so that it would have the same structure of the image or the file name. For this one, this is the cooking image that we have. So. I'm going to change this. We're going to use this in home page. So home, then name of the app that's be recipe. And then for sign up, I'm going to change this to sign up recipe. And then for login, sign in. And then for this one, this is the recipe book. So I'm going to change this to recipe book. Oh, just call it recipe. That could work also. Then this man thinking should be the empty. This one, and then we're going to paste this inside of the folder that we created. This PC in the folder right here, and then we're going to create here a new folder. Let's call that static. And this will contain all the images that we're going to use for this website. Then let's go back here. We can now see all of those images. And now we're going to use them. So for us to be able to use them, we need to first set up some things. So go to your Django recipe app. This is the main app of the application. And then here, you're going to go to the bottom. And you can see here, this will be the static URL. We're going to use that. I'm just going to add something else. 
so static files and then there's so this would be the directory of the static file we're going to use the base directory and then the static folder and after that we're going to also set another one which would be for the media so let's say media url and then we're going to set this to media and then we're going to add the media root and we're going to set this to the base directory and the media folder so after we do that we're now going to create here another folder called media this folder will contain all of the media files that we're going to have in this application so we can now go to the urls here so that we can see the images we're going to import some stuff here so i'll just add a comment so import imports for showing images then this import from django dot config a conf and then let's import the settings and then from django conf urls and static we're going to import the static next is we're going to add here in the url patterns the static settings dot media url and the document root that would be the settings dot media root so after that we can now go to our core page here and we're going to add the images that we're going to use so in this home page that we have the first thing that we're going to do if you want to use the images in the static folder is that we're going to load the static here so opening and closing curly brackets and load static just like this one and then after that we are now allowed to use the images in our static folder so to use the images let's go here to the image source that we have and then we're going to use the curly brackets and percentage signs and then static then we're going to add here the image that we're going to use so this one right here we have the home recipe i'm just going to copy the whole image path and then paste it here so i'll change this alt to home image then let's check our website hopefully that would work so it shows here an error because we have a uh, stuck here not defined and i'm just going to clear this and then we run the server so here it says that the media url must end with a slash so we can go to the settings page so here we have the settings file and then let's check if the media url doesn't end with a slash so let's add a slash here let's save it again and as you can see it runs the server after that let's check here and now the image that we have here would be the image that we downloaded so after we do that let us add the images for the other ones as well so for the sign up the first thing that we're going to do is load the image so on the top we're going to add curly braces and percentage signs and then load static then here on the image source we're going to add here the static and import the path or the file name so curly bracket curly brackets and then percentage signs and then static and add here the uh, file um, that we're going to use the sign in recipe i'm just going to copy that file and then I'm going to paste it here inside and then this would be the sign in image then let's go to the sign in so log in as you can see here we're currently using that image then for the other one which is the sign up let's go to the top and load the static and here we're now going to use that static file so curly brackets print uh, percentage signs and then static and then the file name so this one the sign up let's copy that file file name and then paste it we're going to add here the sign up image let's go to create account and we are now currently using that image so after that 
we can now move on to the other parts of our website but we're going to create a message here so whenever we sign up and sign in we're just currently printing this uh, message here let's change this and let's add a message that we can see inside of the website itself so that would be on the next section welcome back so in this section we are going to create alerts for our website whenever we sign up the only thing that we're doing for now is we're using print to print a message on the terminal however this is not visible to the users of the website therefore we want something that will visually indicate that they are already signed up or their account is created successfully so to do that we are going to import here on the top so from django.contrib and we're going to import messages so messages is what we're going to use to be able to alert or to turn something back to the user so for this one we're going to use this first on this part wherein we are logging in so we're going to use messages then dot then it would ask here it, what would be the type of the message you're going to send so for example on this part we are logged in successfully so we're going to use the success then we're going to pass here the request and the message that we want to send so well we're going to just copy this this is the message that we want to send also to the user so i'm going to paste it here at the bottom so this would be the messages for success so whenever we have an error this part here which is the invalid credentials what we're going to do is messages dot error pass in the request and then the message that we want to send which is this one right here let's copy that and paste it here so that would be for our sign in view function let's go now to our sign up view function so on this one we have here a warning that this or this email has been taken so what we're going to do is add here messages then we're going to set the error and then request then the message that we want to send to the user which is this email is already taken and then also on this part so messages dot error and then we add here the message so before that let's add the request then the message itself so the next one right here this would be the success message so we're going to first create the message then add success we we'll pass in the request and then the message that we want to send which is this one right here and paste it here so for the next one is for the uh, error here we're in we're printing or the passwords don't match so that would be an error again messages that error then we're passing the request and then the message which is passwords don't match this one i'm just going to use single quotes for this one oh that won't work because we don't we have a code here so i'm going to uh, use that instead and this part would be success request and you are now logged out successfully have a great day this part right here so to be able to use these messages that we created we should update our base.html so currently we are just displaying a different set of navigation bar if the user is authenticated so i'm just going to kind of close that up and then below here we want to add another part of our base.html wherein we're going to display an alert so below this end if here we're going to create a new div element so div and then going to create a class of p3 running three and then for md the medium pages set the px to three and then t we set the py to three and then set the bg to white and in dark mode we're going to set the bg to gray 900 it's like this one then this would be the container that we're going to use for each of our alerts so to do to create our alerts let's go to tailwind and then type css alerts here we're going to see different types or different designs for our alert so what i really like about this design here is we have this design that you can dismiss a specific alert and you re it requires the flow up by js cdn that we used earlier so make sure that you have that then we're going to use 
for example for error we're going to use this one and then for let's say for example a success we're going to use the green one we also have other styles here like this one this could be also be useful and if you want if you have another alert which have the contents you can also use this design right here so what i really like about this one is that you can dismiss it afterward so you can also combine the design so for example here i really like this border alert here and you can use that border alert here you can add that border alert so for now i'm just going to copy one of them and here on this part we're going to first set so for uh, messages in messages so we have our messages here and then we're going to iterate over it so we're going to use a for loop for message in messages and of course we need to end this for loop and then we are now going to add here the warning or the type of message that we want to add so for success th that is the type of success so here inside the for loop we are going to add an if statement so if the message or the type is success in message dot tags we're going to display a certain uh, design so we're going to add here an end if for now so let's say for example we're going to use the design this one so that would be the green one and we're going to search for that here so for the green one this would be the bg green so let's copy this alert number three let's copy that and we're going to paste it inside of this if statement that we created and then just indent it just like that one okay so this would be displayed whenever we uh, have a success message so what we can do also is print the message so for example here we have an info and this would be the content of that specific alert this one right here so we want to um, show the message that we have here whenever the uh, alert is a success alert so to do that we're just going to remove all of this stuff let's add it here and then we're going to add here the message just like that one and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try this out so whenever we log in let's say for example john doe and our password here and then log into the account so as we can see we have this login message here that login was successful and welcome back and then what we're going to do is to kind of add the design for each of the type of error that we have so let's say for example um, we have a warning error so we're going to use in a yellow alert for that so in this end if we're going to add an else if so this one right here if success is uh, if the message tag is equal to success we're going to add here another l if here so l if the message is a warning we're going to use a different type of message so let's add first here an else block there you go so if the type is warning we're going to use a different style which is this one right here the yellow one so let's, let's search for that so that'll be under the green one so this would be this alert message here copy that and paste it inside of this if block and then I'm going to indent it that one and it's indented further again we're going to delete this part then we're going to change or add the message here inside so we're not going to immediately see this because we don't use any warning here so what we can do is create an error that message or error tag so to do that let's just copy this and then let's change it to a different tag let's say error and then in this error we're going to use a different color which is the red one so it'll be the second div 
So this would be the alert one, and this would be the alert two. Let's copy this. And then we are going to add it here inside of the if block and just indent this part. Okay. So after we indent it, we can now remove this part right here and then add the message inside. So let's say, for example, we log out. So log out successful, have a great day. Let's say we add here a username that doesn't exist. Let's say, for example, Jane Doe, we don't have that yet. And then log in. It will give us a red warning here that it is an invalid credential and we should check our username and password. So we can also add other tags as well. Like for example, uh, we want to add a tag for, uh, we have here the warning. Um, maybe the default would be a blue color. So it's not really a error or a success message. It's just a simple blue color, meaning maybe an information is outputted on the screen. So we're going to use the first one right here. And then that would be inside of our else block. And then let's add indentation here. Just like that one. Then we're going to remove this part right here. Let's change this to message. So that would be the default. So whenever um, we have a different type or message, we're going to use the blue one. So that's how you can create alerts for the website. So we can also kind of cut this on this part only. So we're going to try that out on the next section of this video. So that would be all. Then see you on the next one. So in this next section of our tutorial, what we're going to do first is fix the alert message that we have. So when we log in, it will display us this alert here. However, the design kind of overlaps. So we're going to try and fix that. So in the navigation bar, you can see here that it is set to the max width of screen size XL. We're going to use that. And then we are going to save this and let's see what would happen. So as you can see here, when we log out, the size of the container here is now shorter. However, it is leaning to the left side. So we're going to set the margin of the horizontal side. So that would be the right and left side to auto so that it would center the alert. So for example, I'm going to log in and then log in your account. The alert message would be centered. Okay, so after that, we're now going to move on to the next part of this um, tutorial, which is we are going to create the user profile app. So as you can see here, when you go to the DB dbsqlite, that we're going to go through the auth user, as you can see, we have here a limited number of um, fields that we have for the information of the user. So we have first name, last name, email, username, and I guess that is about it. So we want to kind of add other fields such as the profile image and also the gender of the user. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create another app that will handle all of that. So here, I'm just going to terminate this one and we're going to clear our terminal and then we're going to create the user profile app. So to do that, Python, manage.py, we're going to start the app called the user profile. So we cannot use the profile only because it would throw us an error. So then we're going to use here the user profile. And then we successfully created another app. So when we create another app, we are going to the Django recipe app, and then we're going to register it to the installed apps here. So that would be the user profile and what I like to do when we, when I create another app is to create the UR, URLs.py of that certain app and register it afterwards also. So I won't forget about it in the end. So here, just select the user profile folder and then select here or create here the URLs.py file. So after you create the URLs.py file, we're going to import Django URLs and import the path. And then you can now create here an app name. So the app name that we're going to use is profile. And then we're going to use a variable here, URL patterns, and then we're going to set it to an empty for now. And then we're going to register this URLs.py. So go here to the Django recipe and go to the uh, URLs.py file. And then we're going to register the app URLs of this user profile. So that would be the path. 
So whenever the user tried to access the profile here, you're going to pass the decision to the user profile app. So that would be the profile or user profile. And then we're going to pass that to the URLs file of that certain app that we have. So that would be all for this setup of the profile app that we have here. So let's go back to our profile app. And here we're going to create the models. Now for the models, we want to be able to kind of extend the user model. So here, just going to delete this from django.contrib. And we're going to access the auth and then the models. And then we're going to import the user model. Here, we can create another model that would extend the user model. So class, we're going to create the model called profile. And then import the models dot model. And then here, we are going to first add a field. So user is equals to models dot one to one field. And then we're going to add here the user model and on delete. We're going to have the models dot cascade. So in this line, we are using one to one field here, meaning each of the user, the user record that we have, we will have will also have a profile record. And for each of the user, they only have one profile record. So that is the one to one field here. And then we're going to add here an image. So that would be image is equals to the models dot image field and then here we are going to add the upload to so this is the folder that the image is going to be uploaded so that would be the profile images folder so in the profile images folder we are going to add a default image so that default image is not yet in our media folder so this this profile image or the default profile image should be in our media folder. But let's now add a name here. Maybe just add the, the this is the name that we're going to use. So default profile image dot JPEG, for example. And then we're going to search for an image that we can use here. And then we will have the field for gender. So for gender, the that would be a character field. And then we are going to have here the different choices. So to do that, on the top, we're going to add here choices for male. So male is equals to M. Then female is equals to female, or F. And then for other, so let's say others, let's add O. O, there you go. And then we're going to create the gender choices variable. And in here, so if we choose male, it will be set to male and then if we choose female it will be set to female and then if we set others it will be set to others as well okay. so this would be the choices for this particular field then we are going to add here a max length so the ma max length is set to 20 so it should be higher than what is the choices that we have here, a higher character number. And then we're going to add here the choices. The choices would be equal to the gender choices that we have here. So let's say gender choices. And then we're going to set the default. So maybe the default gender of each of our user would be the others. Just like this one. And then they have the power to change that afterwards. And then we're going to create here the string. So double underscore str, double underscore, and then add here the self. Then we're going to return the self dot user dot user name. So this would be connected to the user user model, so we can access the username field on that model. So after that, we are now going to add here. We're now going to use this model here and add it to our SQLite database. So to do that, first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to check for, we're going to migrate or make a migration. So we're going to 
add this model to the list of migration files. So to do that, python manage.py make migrations. So it's going to check if there are any new models in our apps, in our registered app. So don't forget to register the app. So as you can see here, it shows to us that we cannot use an image field because we don't have pillow installed. So pillow would be the dependency we're going to use so that we can work with images. And as you can see here, we are working with a specific image. So to do that, we're going to install pip in our virtual environment. So pip env install, then the name of the dependency, which is pillow, and press enter. And now it's um, adding pillow to the dependencies that we have. So let's just wait for this to finish, then clear. And then we're going to um, use the same command. So python manage.py make migrations. So it shows here that it created a migration file inside of our migrations folder. So let's go here and you can see that initial pie there. And then we are going to migrate because still for now, this model is not yet in our database. So we're going to migrate. So python manage.py migrate. So now it runs that migration and we can check in our database if that is successful. So as you can see here, we have another table that would be the user profile table and the name of the model is profile. So that would be the gender here and the image. So that would be all for this section. We now successfully created the profile model and also the user profile app. Okay, so for this next section, we're going to download a default image that we can use. So let's go ahead and open our browser and let's say default avatar icon. And here, let us search for an image that we can use. So for this one, let's try this one. Let's try to save this. It is a JPEG image, so we can use this. And then let's name it the same name that we add here. So default profile image, so default profile image. And we're going to add this to our folder inside the media page here and save it. And let's go back to our VS code. And we're going to see here, we have that default profile image that we can use. Now, um, we currently have a user called John Doe. However, John Doe don't have a profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete our uh, database here. We're going to delete it. So before we are, we are going to be successfully deleting this, we just make sure that the server is not running. So as you can see, it's not running here. And I'm going to delete this uh, database. So after that, we are going to go to the core and we're going to go to the sign up view function that we have. As you can see, when we sign up here, we're just logging in the credentials and we are also creating the new user. So create the user. So that would be the user model here. And after we deploy here that we created the, the account successfully, we want to be able to create the a profile for the new user here. So to be able to create a new profile, we're going to retrieve the record in the user uh, model. So to do that, we're going to access the user model objects, and we're going to get the record that have a username, which is equal to the username that we have here. So we're going to get the, the record of the user that we currently created, and we're going to set that to the get new user variable. So after that, we are going to create a new profile for this user. So to do that, we're going to access the profile model. The profile model comes from the user profile app. So we're going to import that here on the top. So to do that, just add spaces so that we can kind of separate them. We're going to access the user profile app, and then we're going to access its models, and we're going to import the profile model. So in the profile model here, we can now use it on this part. So profile, and then we are going to get the objects from this profile and we're going to create. So profile objects, then we're going to create another record. So that would be the user, which would be equal to the get new user. So the user um, field in this one, which would be a one-to-one -one field. So for each user, we're going to have one single uh, profile record. So that's what we did here. So for the user, that would be the get new user here.
that would be an instance of that specific object and then we're going to create another record in the profile um, model so whenever we create another user we're going to set or create another profile for that user and then we're going to save this info so new profile save and then after that we are going to redirect the user then to the home page right here so don't have any other pages yet but we're going to update this afterwards so after we save the user profile we can now start to rerun our application so here we're going to say python manage.py run server so as you can see we have 19 unapplied migrations because we deleted the database and we have to migrate again so to do that python manage.py migrate and it would migrate all of our migration files as you can see we will have the tables right here and then we can now run our website so python manage.py run server and then we can access this on this specific link so let's open that up let's close the other one so that it would be much more clearer so we're going to uh, have a database that doesn't have any value yet so we deleted the john doe um, account so we're going to, to register john doe again so that will be john doe here and then the email for john doe so it be john doe gmail.com and add a password here so after that log in we're set here log in so we're going to change this should be um, register so the account is created successfully and we are now welcome to use this website so let's go back to our visual studio code and check here if the user is created okay that works well and then this user profile is now set to default image of zero or the default image here and the gender is oh or others so that would be the default uh, value that we have here for the gender and also the default value for the image right here so we now successfully created a new user and afterwards we created a profile for that user whenever we want to kind of update the user we're going to create another functionality for that as well so for now in this part or section of the video we successfully created another user by signing up and then creating that specific record so in the next part we are going to try and display the image of the user here and also the information like its name and its email address okay for this section what we're going to do is we're going to update our base html so that it would display the contents or the um, what we call the images that we use for this profile so we're going to display here the personal information of the current user so we're going to change this flow right here to a different one this way the flavor finder be the title here and then we're going to add here we have a source for that image so we're going to use the image that we added in the uh, profile model so to do that we're going to get the request and then the user so this one right here is automatically given to us because we are requesting for this page so we are getting the current user who is re requesting for this page to pop up so we will get the user model for our John Doe uh, user so request that user then we can get the profile here so this would be a foreign key to the profile model of this specific user so for each user we have a profile so we access the profile and then we can access the image that is the image field that we created and we're going to get the URL so if we go back see here we now display the image that we use that be the default image that we used and then we can also change here the alt so that should be the user image so we can add here request that user and you can access here the first name of the user and if we do that we will not be able to see it because we have the image so let's say for example let's just change it to a different one or we'll not be able to see it still maybe we can see it when you expect this element so you see here john photo so the first name of our current user is john and then you can also add the last name so just paste it here and then last name and then we will use this also in this part so we're displaying the name of the user so we can use that and then we're going to display the email so adjust this to the email 
of the user that we currently have. So if you refresh, as you can see here John Doe, and it will also display the email. And let us return this part right here. So we're going to access the profile model and then image on that profile model, the image field, and you'll, you're going to get the URL of the image. And now this shows the profile image that we currently have. So that would be for each of the pages that we access whenever we are authenticated. And then after that, what we're going to do is we are going to our user profile page. And here we're going to create the templates folder that would contain all of the HTML files that belongs to this user profile. So we want to be able to see the personal information of the current user. So to do that, we are going to create another folder here called templates and then the name of this pro this app which is the profile and then what we're going to do is create here a page to view the profile of the user so we're going to name that view profile so that would be the view profile page view profile not html and then here we can go to the uh, sections we have for our core so we don't have to kind of uh, add type it in all of it so here you're extending from the base HTML so let's just copy it and paste it here and also the end block so this would be the starting point of our view profile we're not going to load the static because we're not going to get an image from the static folder so we close this out and then we're going to display here the personal information of the user so we can go to Flowbyte again, and then we can access there a card component. Search here, cards. In this card component, we have here the user profile card. It's like this one. I'm going to click that, and we're going to wait for it to load. Okay, it is now currently loaded. So what we're going to do is we are going to select this one and paste it here. Just like that. And then we're going to add here a dropdown. So we're going to put it inside of another div. So let's add another div here. And we're going to set the class for this div to flex. And then we're going to justify center so that the contents of this or the, this div that we have would be in the center of the page. So I'm just going to cut that out and then put it inside of this div that we created. And we're going to indent this to show that it belongs to the specific div here. Okay. And you're also going to kind of make this bigger. So let's say LG here. And then here we're displaying an image. So for this one, displaying this bonnie green image so just like what we did earlier we're going to the base here and what we did is change this email that we have uh, this profile image that we have here so we're going to the view profile and then copy that here and also this first name and last name photo this would be the alternate text that we're going to display and also the name that we have here and our email you can also use here the username. So let's say username here. And we're going to add an add symbol, this username. And then for now, let's try to view this. So we're going to create a view function for this page. So let's go to the views here. And then we are going to create here. First one would be we're going to import the uh, login required so this would only be accessed by from users who are currently logged in so Django contrib and then we're going to access the auth and the decorators and then import the login required so we're going to add that at the top so login required this view function will only be accessible to users who are logged in then we're going to create our view function which is the view profile function and then pass here the request and then we're going to return and render a page so request then the path of the page which is the profile slash and then the view profile dot html page that we have here 
and then you're going to pass here dictionary so the title for that would be the profile here so after we create a view function the next thing that we're going to do is to add it to the urls so we're going to create a url pattern so add here a path that would be the link so whenever we access the profile app so if we set it to empty and then we're going to access the views so before we can access the views we should import it on the top so from dot so that means the current folder and we're going to import the views file that we have here and then we can now access the view function inside of that view file so views dot and the function that we're going to access is the view profile function and then we're going to add here the name so the name would be view profile so after that let's test this out make sure that the server is currently learning and then here so we're currently signed in so let's access the profile page so as you can see here we have this page it displays our image and the name and also our user name so currently we don't need this both of these buttons so we're going to delete those buttons so what we currently want is this part only so it displays our profile information and in this part we have edit export data and delete so what we want to do on this part is create a buttons for updating our user profile and also updating our password so we're just going to delete this part right here the list item and then we're going to update this to update profile and then on this one we're going to update the password we're going to create those pages on the next section so as you can see here we have the update profile and update password here so that's it for this section we successfully created a profile page that would display the profile of this current user so we're going to test this out if we are not logged in so let's say profile here and we cannot find that page because we cannot access it if we are not logged in we can only access it if we are currently logged in let's go to the profile you can see the profile page here okay so for the next section of this video we're going to create the update profile page so that we can update our user profile so to do that we're going to go to the sign up so the sign up here is already a form that we can use so we're just going to use this form here and update its contents let's go to the user profile and paste it here so that's going to create another file here that is the update profile page update profile html then we are going to paste the code so the only difference that we have here is not is that we are not going to update our password in this page we just want to update our user profile so we're just going to remove this parts here and also we don't have this register here so we're going to just remove that and afterwards we are going to also remove the image and we only want the form instead so just remove this image here and then on this part we are going to uh, first remove a top part wherein we're creating a grid of uh, two columns we have here that would or the 12 columns that would allow us to have like the form on the left side and then on the right side an image so we're going we're not going to need that anymore so we'll just remove that part and also we're going to remove both of those div here and the only thing that would be here is this part which is the form it's going to be indent this and then we have here full and the max width of this one should be lg so max width lg then we're adding the six here and then what we're going to do is we're going to remove this background here we're going to use the background that comes from the base.html we're going to set this to flex and we're going to justify to center so that it would be in the center of our page now let's try this page so we're going to update our profile so this button right here let's change this to update profile just like that one and then 
we will also change some of the values here but for now uh, we are just going to uh, kind of output this page and see the contents don't need to add the load static here so we're going to remove that and then we're going to go to the views so that we are going to create a view function that would display this update profile so what we're going to do is go here and set the login required this can only be accessed by individuals or users that are currently logged in and then we're going to update the profile then we'll get passed in the request and then we're going to return and render the page so we're going to pass here the request and the path of the page that would be profile slash update profile dot html and then inside of here we're going to pass a dictionary so the first one, first thing that we're going to pass here is of course the title of the page that would be the edit profile title or let's say update profile instead and then we're going to go to the urls and then we are going to create a url path for this one so call the path and then inside of here we're going to call the update slash and then access the views file and select the update profile view function that we created and we're going to use the name which is the update profile there we go and now let's try this out we are now starting our server let's try to add here update we're going to see this form that we have here so we're going to change this to sign up to our platform to update profile or you can also use the title that we give just copy that title and paste it here so as you can see we have the update profile that title is what we pass here so we set the title to update profile so that could work also and then um the next thing that we're going to do here is we want to be able to display our profile image our current profile image so what we will do is before this form here we're going to create a div div element and then inside this div element we're going to have an image now that image would come from the view profile here so let's just copy the image that we have here this part and we can also change the size of this image to fit our um, design that we have so we're going to add here a class the class that we're going to add is flex and the flex will be column and then the items will be center so that this image will be in the center of our page however as you can see the um, the title is now under this part right here so maybe what we can do is move this upward here so that it would be on the top or let's see um, I think this still works even if there is an update profile at the bottom so we're just going to return it for now and then as so you can see here the profile image that we have for this page and then we are going to add the other inputs here so as you can see we have the first name last name username and email and then we can add here another input for the gender so when we go back to our model we have here the gender part so that is a select so what we're going to do is let's go to flowbyte and here we have this select option here just going to copy that let's copy the select here the design is what we wanted so if below this your email let's paste it there and we're going to create a div first for this one a div element and then for the div tag and then put it put the contents of the select inside of this one so let's refresh we're going to see the select option here we're going to change the select option to gender let's move this one your gender and then here for this four right here is selecting which um, input it's going to add the label so for example when you click this select option here it highlights this part it means it is connected by ID and then we're going to change that ID to gender here and let's test that out again it still works okay on this option we're going to add here the uh, selected which would be the first one we're going to remove this one because the default that we have is others so the first option that we will have here we only have three options so we're going to remove the upper one as well the first option or the value would be m that would be for male so we're going to set this one to male 
and then female is the second one let's change this to female here and the third one would be others so O and then we're going to change this to others here as well and then what we're going to do is we are going to go to the views and then we're going to try and update the views here so let me just go to the views the last thing that we're going to do here I remember is we are going to add an input for our uh, image so we will add an input wherein we can upload our image so what we can do here is go through this flow byte and then search for image input this would show here the input for image so let's just say forms input here Oh, it, it shows us the cards. Let's just say input. And we're going to search here for the next input, which would be the image. So we have different sample inputs here. You can also go to the category here and just select the input field. And then we are going to search for the input field for the image so that we can copy its design. To scroll down here so file input for the image we're going to use the file input and we will have this input here we can add one that has a helper text and we also have uh, options available for choosing different uh, sizes so let's choose this one right here and then we're going to put it above the name so here we're going to create a div tag and paste the code here And afterwards, I'm going to check if that works. So that works now. And then for now, maybe I'm not sure if I would like this um, helper text here. So I'm just going to remove it. And fresh, okay. Don't have the helper tag. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to add here the type. So the type of this one would be file as you can see here that's file the id is file input so what we need to add here is the name so the name would be equal to image and then for the first name we're going to add the name first name here and we're going to add here the value so after this id we're going to add the value of user The one query braces and user would be the first underscore name. So let's just check if that works out. Let's remove first the placeholder that we have here. Then we can kind of check if that works out as well. So as you can see, even if you don't have the helper, you can see here that the value set to this one is set to John because the current user that we have, so the current user and we're accessing the first name so that would be the first name of our user which is john though so the place here placeholder here is also john so that could be a little bit hard to see if we don't remove the placeholder first so we added here the value for the first name then we can add here afterwards is the value for the last name and then next is the for the email and also the username so this part right here We'll add here the username value copy the, all of this and paste it here let's set it to user username and here set it to user would be the email okay let's refresh that so as you can see that the inputs already have a value in them that we can use and the last one would be for the gender so what we can do here is we want to be able to select the current value that we have so when we created the john doe the current value that we have here would be the uh, what we call the others because that would be the default that we have in here in our models the default would be others so what we can do is we want to select others here so the value of the gender so we can go to the update profile here and then we can add here a condition so to add a condition 
we're going to use the curly brackets and then percentage signs inside and then if the user that profile the, so we're accessing the profile model and then we're going to access the gender field if it is equal to M therefore we are going to select this specific option so we're going to say select it and then we're going to end our condition and if right there so we're going to copy this and ch just change the value on the other options as well so if gender is equals to f and if the gender is equals to o oh i click the shift so i'll just close that and set to o so as you can see here we are now set to others so we now successfully edited this form that we have and this also has a crf csrf token here so we can move on to creating our update profile functionality we only have a render here on this part we're just going to render and we don't have a functionality that would handle the update so let's do that if the request is equal to method that will be equal to post so if we have a post request what we'll do is we're going to try so I just I just pass it for now so that uh, we can create an a um, functionality here that would update so we will add here the try and catch block so that we can have a kind of error handling so except here and we're going to get the exception as the error and then we're going to pass this for now and also this side here we're going to pass this okay so after that after we create our try except block here what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve all of the information that is passed from our form so to do that we're going to access first the request and then post and then we're going to get the name that we added here so for example we have the name of image name of first name here so we're going to get all of those names here the first name what i want to do here is put it inside of a variable first name then we're going to copy this and just change the values so the second one would be the last name I'm just going to copy it and then paste it here last name and then the next one would be for our username i believe the username here I'm just going to copy it and paste it here and for the next one would be our email so go to our email name here and we're going to set this to email and then for the next one would be the gender let's just copy this and check here for the gender here we currently don't have the gender name so we're going to add it here so in the in beside the id i'm going to add the name here gender that is why i always try to just copy the name here so that i can also double check while i was copying if that specific name is already created so i add here the request and post square brackets and gender and we're going to put the name here gender so after that what we're going to do is we are going to check if the image is changed or if we have a value for the image so to do that we're going to first get the image and then we are going to request the files we're going to get the image name here so for that to successfully work we need to also add another um, part here in our form so after the method post we're going to set this encrypt type to multi-part form data so that it would be able to retrieve or receive a file that we have here so after we retrieve the file what we're going to do next is we're going to check if that file is changed or the file that we have on the form is changed so if the image if the user uploads an image we're going to set the request dot user dot profile image or in this case we just use the profile dot image here and then profile image and then we're going to add here the image so what we're doing is changing the image value to the new image that the user passed and then the next one would be if the user changed the gender so for the gender 
we're going, just going to pass here the gender. Then for the next one is request user dot the profile would be saved. So what we did on this part is we first focus on the two for the profile. That would be the gender and also the image. So if the user uploads an image on the form, we're going to change the image from our database to the new image. Also that would be true for gender. And then we're going to save. So this would be for the profile part or the profile model. So let's just here profile model. And then on the next one is we're going to have one for updating the user model. So this would be the user model. And the code is almost the same. We're just going to copy this one for now. But we won't add or we won't access the profile model because we want to change what is inside of the or a field in the user model. So that would be the first name. Then we're going to set the uh, value that the, the user add here on the first name. Just going to copy this multiple times. And then this would be for the last name. And then on the next one, this would be for the username. And then for the next one, this would be for the email. And for the next part, we're going to save this. So we already get all of the new information that comes from the form. We're going to save this now. So request.user.save. So after that, we are going to add a message that the profile is updated successfully. So here, we're going to import the message on the top of our file. So that would be from django.contrib dot or import the messages. In here, we are going to add a message alert. So messages dot success. Then inside of this, we're going to pass in the request and also the message. That would be profile updated successfully. And then the changes are or have been saved. And we're going to add here the return. Then we're going to redirect. But before we can do that, we're going to import here the redirect. So return, redirect. We're going to redirect to the profile. And then we're going to access the update profile that we have here. So we're just kind of uh, redirecting to the same page. And we can also leave this out, but I'll add this and we'll update this afterwards. So update profile. And then what we're going to do here on this part is if we have a error. So for this part, we're going to create a message that we have an error. And then we're going to pass here the request and add here a formatted string saying failed to update the profile. And then next is we're going to add the error that we encountered. So I guess let's test this out. So in this profile we have here, to refresh this and let's change this to let's say for example Jane the we so that would be Jane though and then Jane though and then we we'll could change this into a female update profile so update profile is not a valid view function or pattern name we successfully updated here however we have here an error which is the profile uh, update profile here so let's check that out on this side so we already have our update profile this profile here and update profile so let's see where the error come from so let's check that again profile maybe this space is the reason let's try that out again let's return it back to John Doe and then John Doe and add here the this to John though here and then reset this to mail and update the profile so profile updated successfully you ch your changes have been saved your changes have been saved right here and then we updated the profile okay so that's it for this update profile functionality we can now um, add this to the um, page that we have so let's go here to our home page of the profile then we're going to add this update profile here. So let's go to the view profile. And in here, we are going to add the URL for this button. So to do that, just going to use curly brackets and then percentage signs URL. And then we're going to pass in here 
the profile and set that to update the profile so okay we are now redirected to this page and also we can go back to the update page we have in here okay that will be all for this part we are now successfully created our update profile form okay for this next part of our Django recipe app we're going to create our update password page so we're going to go to the core and templates and then we're going to copy the code that we have here for sign in and then we're going to use this as our base template for the update password page and we're going to paste it here and then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the part of the image here we don't need the image so let's just remove that and also we're going to move remove this part here wherein we're going to create a grid let's remove that also both of this div right here then we're going to reindent this content then after that we're going to um, update this content here that will be the update password okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to remove this and we're going to change it to the um, we're going to change that value that we have there and for up updating passwords we don't need the username so we're just going to remove here the username and then this is the password so we're going to have here another three inputs so for password we're going to first get the old password will be old and underscore password next thing is we're going to change this so your old password and then this one we're going to get the new password here and for the last input we're going to confirm new password okay so we now create a new password so your new password and then this one is your or confirm new password and then we're going to remove this part wherein we're going to register because we don't need that for now of course we're going to change the content here so that would be update password and we're going to save that so i'm going to zoom in for a bit so after this one what we're going to do is we're going to create a view function in this part right here before that we're going to change this section here to flex justify and center and then we're going to set this to a maximum size of maximum width of lg then we change this to six and then what we're going to do is we're going to create our view function for this one so go to the views and then here we're going to first call the login report and then def update password view function we're going to pass here the self and then or the request i mean then what we're going to do next is we're going to render the page so that would be return render and then the request and we're gonna pass here the path of the file that we want to render so that would be profile and then update password the html then next is we're going to pass in here a dictionary so inside of this dictionary, we will have the title. So that would be title, that would be change. There you go. And then we're going to create a URL here. So we're just going to copy this one and then we're going to update the password. Okay. And here we're going to add password. Okay, then we're going to check if we can run this. Python manage.py run server. Okay, it doesn't throw us any error. And then we're going to click this to open that page. We're just going to close this and we're going to try to go to the profile and password update. So it will show this page that we created here. Now we can now see the page. What we're going to do is we're going to update this views so that it would receive a password or a post request 
so if the request that method is equals to post what we're going to do is we're going to have a try catch block so try and then let's pass here I mean try accept so accept and then exception has error and we're going to pass for this one also so after this try block here we're going to retrieve all of the uh, information that I submitted to the form that would be the old password the new and the confirm new password so to do that we're going to call the request and then post and then add here the name that we get here so just going to copy this one old password and then we're going to paste it on both sides so this one and this one okay and then we're going to call again the request post and square brackets here and then we're going to copy this new password here and then we're going to paste that here so that's it for the new password then we're going to pull the last one which is the confirm new password this one and this one also so we're going to copy this confirm new password and then we're going to paste it here so we are now successfully retrieve all of the information that is passed to the form and then we will now try to send a message or error here so if there is an error so messages that error and then we're going to retrieve the request and add here the failed to update password old password so for this one we're not going to send here the old password because we're, we are still uh, having the trying to retrieve the uh, information so maybe on this one we're going to let's say failed to update password and then add here error after that what we're going to do is we're going to have an if block here so we can now get the information from the form what we're going to do next is we're going to have an if block so if request user check password so in this code right here we're checking if the old password that is given by the user is the same as the password that is inside or inside of the database so if that is true we're going to pass for now and then else we're going to have here a pass one so if um, the old password is correct then we're going to check if the new password matches the confirm new password if they are the same and if they are we're going to pass if not we're going to have an else block and then again we're going to pass here so if the password the old password is true meaning the old password given by the user is matching or matches with the password that we have in the database then here um, what we're going to do is if the old password doesn't match we're going to return a message here an error so request and then here we're going to say failed to update password so old password does not match so it doesn't match the password then we're going to return then redirect and then we're going to pass here the profile update password just like this one and then here uh, what we're going to do is if for example the new password doesn't match with the, con the confirm new password what we're going to return here is a message dot error request and then say failed to update password and let's say new password does not match so return redirect so I'm going to pass here the profile and then update password let's like this one then what we're going to do inside of this is we're going to uh, get the request user and we're going to set the password to the new password so that would be the new password here you can also use this confirm new password but it is it makes more sense to use this new password here so the new password would be saved and then the request that user is going to save the new password that is given here then the next one is we're going to have the message success and the request and also we're going to pass here password 
update updated successfully and then what we're going to do is we're going to return redirect and let's say for sign in just like that so that's how we created our update password view function then we're going to check here if that connects okay that connects properly and what we're going to do is we're going to try that out so first refresh this close that out and then here add here john doe then eight three six three zero three so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the profile then password and update it shows this file then we're going to add here the old password Let's try to change it to a different one and then new password and then we're going to update our password and so let's see if this throws us an error so it says the failed to update password old password does not match so we're going to add here the matching password so this is the password that is stored in the database and then we're going to create the new password and update that and it um, redirects us to the sign-in page and says password updated successfully so we're gonna try to log in on that new password and we are now logged in so we successfully created our update password view function or update password functionality so that will be all for this section okay for this next section what we're going to do is we're going to update this part right here we want to be able to kind of um, go to the profile page and then from there we can um, update our password or our uh, profile information so let's go to the core and in the base we're going to update this links that we have here so currently we have other links such as earnings and the settings so i'm going to remove that too and then i'm also going to change this dashboard here let's change this to profile and then here we will have the url for the profile so pretty basis depends on the design url and then you're going to call the app so that would be the profile app and then we're going to call the view profile if i'm not mistaken i'll just check it here in the user and in the urls and we have the view profile just like this one then we're going to use that and let's go ahead and check this you see here the profile and click it push us to the profile page so if we are in the update profile or view profile i mean we can now update the profile and let's try to update also the password so update password here let's refresh and let's try to click update profile okay that works let's go update password and that works also so we now successfully created our profile um we're now going to move on to the main core or the main application for this um, website that we're building which would be the recipe app so currently we have uh, authentication we can authenticate and we can also update our profile information and now we're going to move on to the main app for this application which would be the recipe app so again to create an app let's go here and open our terminal let's clear this out and then let's say python manage.py start app and the app name would be recipe so after we created the app recipe the first thing that we're going to do is register this app in our installed apps recipe here and after that we're going to create here the recipe we're going to create another file here which would be the urls.py so in the urls.py of our recipe what we're going to do is first we're going to import path so from django.urls and import the path so after we import the path we're going to create an app name for this one so app name is equal to recipe and then here we're go we will go to create a url patterns variable and set this to empty for now and then we're going to uh, register these urls to the django recipe app and then urls here so we're going to import this path here so say for example path and we're going to have here the um recipe slash so that would be whenever the user access this recipe slash here the decision would now be passed to in, to the um recipe app so recipe and then that urls 
just like this one then the next thing that we're going to do is um, we can we are now able to successfully register our URLs so let me check that first app name is recipe all right so we can now move on to the next one so after we register our um, URL and we also register our main app what we're going to do is create our models so for the models this would be added to our database so therefore we're going to create first the first first model and this one so from DB import models then also from Django that contrib that auth we're going to import the users user model and then we are also going to import here some of the other stuff so for now we are going to create a class called category now this uh, model is the category for each recipe so as we saw earlier we have category appetizer and snack main dishes bread and baked goods and stuff like that so we were able to kind of filter out the recipe in the application using its category so the first field is name and we're going to add the models that char field so the name of the category is a character field with a max length of 255 characters next is we're going to create the class meta and then we're going to set or setting the right plural name in the admin site like this one and then what we're going to do here is we're going to set the verbose name plural to categories so what would happen here is when we added it to the admin panel it would be category with an s so that's not the correct plural name so what we did here is we set the plural plural name in admin site so the next thing is we're going to setting the name field in alphabetical order so ordering so we're going to order the content to name Just like this one and then showing the actual name of the field so def, we're going to add here the str, and then self. So return self name. So whenever we call this category field name, it would return or category it would return to us the name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the predefined categories here. So we don't have to kind of always create the categories so whenever we for example copy someone copy the code and they run the application it will be automatic that it will create a predefined set of categories for the recipes so let's create this predefined variable predefined categories variable and inside of this one we will create first the category so first category is appetizers and snacks second category is main dishes and then breads and baked goods and then desserts next is salads and sides and then soup soups and stews next is pasta and pizza next is not for healthy options next category would be not specified so we only have here the limited set of predefined categories but if you want your website or application that you're building to have more categories than this just add the category here and what we're going to do is we're going to import some stuff so that each migration that we created which we will automatically create these predefined categories so from django db models and then add here the signals so whenever we are post migrate we are going to from django 
dispatch and then import the receiver so what we're going to do is using the receiver and post migrate here and then if we're going to check if categories are created so we have here the sender and the quarks and then we're going to check first check if category is or category table is empty and then if category dot objects dot count will be equal to zero so count that is a method here if it's equal to zero then we're going to so if if it's empty if empty we're going to populate it with predefined categories like this one and then for category name in predefined categories so a category dot objects and then we're going to create here the name of category name so what we're doing here is for each um, element inside of this we will uh, create a for loop for that for for in so for each of those category name we're going to create it so whenever the category objects count is zero so this is often happening when we just um, copy the entire project and this is the first time we're going to run it so it, the category objects count would be equal to zero and then we're going to run this we're in we're uh, automatically adding the predefined categories so that we don't need to add it all the time so that's all for the category so in the next parts we're going to create the other models for the recipe app okay welcome back so uh in the last session is we uh add here the ordering so we want to order the categories by their name so alphabetical order so we should put here uh tuple so we'll use parentheses instead of curly braces and we're going to create a migration file for this. So Python manage.py and make the migrations. So after that, you can see here in our migrations, we will have here the initial for the creating the category model. And then we're going to migrate. So Python manage.py migrate. So using this, it will now be added into the DB SQLite that we have as a table. So for the next one, we are going to create the next model. And that model would be the recipe model so for the recipe model class recipe and then point to pass models dot model and in here what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a foreign key to the category so category is equals to models dot foreign key and we're going to foreign key to the category model that we have and then on delete we're going to set this to models that cascade and then what we're going to do is set the related name equal to category Just like this one then for the next field would be created by field so created by equal to models dot foreign key and then we're going to set this as a foreign key to the user model and then on delete we are going to again model stat cascade so whenever a certain user is deleted from the database we will also delete all of the recipe that this user created then we will add this related name equal to created by just like this one then what we're going to do next is we're going to set the name to models that char field or character field and then max length of this would be 100. so for the next one we will now create the image so the image would be models dot image field so for an image field we're going to upload the image to the folder recipe images so this recipe images would automatically be created inside of the media folder whenever we uh, kind of add a recipe image so we're going to use a default image so we have here 
default image for profile, but we don't have yet the default image for a recipe. So let's set that to default image, default recipe image dot of, let's say, JPEG for now. And we're going to set this to blank. But this would be equal to true. And then null would be equal to true also. So what we can do is go to our static folder. So we have here the recipe SVG. We're going to use this as the default image for the recipe. So let's just copy this. Or maybe we can also... Oh, let's just copy this for now so that we have a backup. And we place it here on the media. And then we're going to change its name to whatever name that we're added here. However, we should also consider that this is an SVG and not a JPEG. So I'm just going to copy this one. And I'm going to rename this recipe here. Okay, so we now have the default recipe image that SVG. So the next thing that we're going to do is add a description. So description, we're going to set it to text field. So models that text field. So text field um, don't have their max length. And then cook time. Let's say models dot char field, and then the max length of this char field is a hundred. Next, we're going to create variable serving that would be equal to models dot character field, and that would be that would have the max length of a hundred also. Then the next thing that we're going to create is created by equal to so first we have the created by also already so created at so this would store the date in which this particular record is created at so models that date time field and this will be we're going to set this auto now add so auto now add to true Just like this one and then lastly we're going to have the updated at field that will be set to models dot date time field and then we're going to set this to auto underscore now equal to true so that one and then lastly we're going to write here a def str oh, underscore and self next thing is we're going to return the self dot name okay we have a model for the recipe app you just check this we have the category it's a folder for key to the category model um created by so that is created by the user the name image description the cook time serving and created and updated at fields so that would be all for our recipe we're going to create a migration file for this python minus fi make migrations so we created the recipe model so python managed that by migrate so that we will have that in our database clear again and let's move on to the next model so for the next model we will have a class of instruction so this would be the instruction that we're going to give for each recipe so models model and then in here we're going to give this one the recipe the recipe would be a foreign key to the recipe model so a foreign key and we're going to set this to recipe and then on delete to set this to models dot cascade and then the related name would be equal to instructions Just like this one and then what we're going to do is next is we're going to create the step number now this step number would be the step number of the instruction so we're going to add here the models dot positive integer field and then next is instruction text. So instruction text. That field would be a models dot text field. Okay. Next is we're going to create a class called meta. And then ordering. So we're going to order the the records by the step number. So step underscore number. Just like that. And now we're going to create a migrations file for this model so python manage that by make migrations and then python manage that by migrate we're going to clear and then what we're going to do 
Now is the next model. So we have the instructions model already. The last model that we're going to create is the ingredient model. So class ingredient and then models dot model. And then we're going to set this first recipe or your first um, field would be the recipe field. So recipe, this would be the foreign key to the recipe models. So models dot foreign key. And we're going to set that to recipe. Just like this one and then on delete so whenever we delete the specific recipe we're going to cascade meaning we will also delete all of the ingredients for that recipe then let's say related name would be equal to the ingredients so that would be all for the first field then the second field would be the name of the ingredients so models dot and set this to a character field then the max length of that character field is equal to 100. So for the next one we're going to set is the quantity of the ingredient. So how many of those ingredients are needed. So models.char field. In the char field, we can set here the max length of equal to 100. Okay, next is we're going to create the metric for each or each ingredient. So it would have multiple choices. So the first choice is gram or grams is equals to grams. So this one. Next is kilograms would be equal to kilograms. Next is the milliliters equal to milliliters. Just like that one. Then next would be liters. Equal to liters. Next one is teas, teaspoons. So S P O N S, teaspoons. Just like that one. And then the next thing that we're going to add here is cups. And then for tea teaspoon, we also have a tablespoon. So. Then we're going to add here the table spoons. So for the next one, after the cup, we have the ounces. So ounces, so this one. Next is we're going to create one for the pound. Don't need this. Pound is equal to, or pounds, plural, is equal to the pounds. Just like that one. Next, we're going to do is we are going to set by pieces just like that one. Then we're going to set default equal to not specified, meaning the user didn't add here. So let's set the metric choices. The next thing that we're going to do is kind of map the variable to the output. So grams. Let's map to the grams. Next is kilograms. I'm going to set this to kilograms. Next, we're going to do is we're going to set the milliliters set to the milliliters. Step that one. The next one would be liters. Just two liters. For the next one, we have the table or the spoons. Or the teaspoons. Just like this one. Then next, so we're going to add for the tablespoon. So tablespoons. Tablespoons. This one. And then the next one would be cups. So we'd set this to cups. Just like this one. Next one would be four ounces. Then the next one would be four pounds. Then the next one would be four pieces. This one, and then the next one would be the last one, which is the default. 
to set the default to not specified. This one right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we will now create the metric field. So metric would be equal to models dot character field. And then we're going to pass here the max length. Max length of equal to 20. Okay. Then going to add the choices. So choices is equals to what choices do we have? Choices are metric choices. And the default is equal to the default. It's like this one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to define here the underscore str, the underscore, and the self. And then what we're going to do, this part is return the formatted string to be self dot quantity and then self dot get metric display and then get metric display off the self dot name. So quantity first, then self get metric display of the name. Okay. So that will be all for our ingredients and also the instructions model. So Python manage that by make migrations. And then Python manage that by go to migrate. Clear it. Okay, so let's try to Python manage that by server. The page, it's working. So in the next part, we're going to use all of these modules that we created for the recipe. Welcome back, and I hope you're enjoying this uh, tutorial to create a Django recipe website using Django, Tailwind CSS, and Flowby. So in the last part, we created the category recipe instruction and ingredients models. So in the next part of this video, we are going to create the crude functionalities for each of these models. We're going to create the create, read, update and delete functionality. So I hope you stick around and I'll see you on the next part of this video.